Hello, happiness seekers. I'm work psychologist Claudia Mitura, and I'm on this journey to test drive and explore some of the best happiness hacks from leading experts around the globe and share what I have learned. And in this episode of X Factor Happiness, I'm diving into the power of our strengths. Using our strengths has the potential to increase our happiness and decrease depression. At work, employees who use their strengths are six times more effective and engage in the role, finding more meaning and satisfaction in it. Parents who use their strengths are better at controlling their challenging emotions, which of course has positive impact on the children's well-being. University students who were asked to focus on expressing their strengths daily, that is, they spending time on activities that they are good at, experience very substantial boost to their life meaning and showed reduction in loneliness and disconnection. So these are just a few examples of recent really fascinating studies which confirm that to create more happiness and meaning in life, we need to be thinking about our strengths and utilizing them and applying them daily. My guest, Nicola Jackson, is a qualified coach with a focus around supporting individuals and teams in learning more about what really energizes them, that is, their personal strengths. So in this episode, you will learn how can we gain more insights into our strengths? How do we know what we are good at? And how can we be applying our strengths more often so that we can generate more happiness in meaning in life? For the other episodes and exciting happiness resources, remember to visit andhappiness.co.uk. But with no further ado, welcome to X Factor and Happiness. Hi, Nick. Welcome to End Happiness. Claudia, thank you so much for having me on the show. Really excited to talk to you this morning. Yes, I am so excited because we are speaking about our X Factor, really. So our personal strengths. So let's start with a definition. What are strengths from your personal practice, from your experience? How would you define strengths? I would define strengths as the things that really energize you. So those are things that when you go out to do a task, your strengths are the how you do it. And when you're using your strengths, you'll get a real buzz, a real energy from doing that. So your strengths could be things like how you work. So you might be really results focused. So getting results really gives you energy. And that may be one of your strengths. Or it may be something like emotional control, where you're really great at being calm on the exterior, no matter what's going on. You've got that really calm exterior. Your feet might be paddling under the water, but actually you're coming across as really calm. And that emotional control is then your strength. So your strength is the how you do something. And it's really the thing that gives you that buzz for you in an individual is your superpower those are the things that are really unique to you amazing I love the definition so that idea of energy and motivation and superpower love it <laughs> because I think you know I would love to be described myself as a superhero superwoman so here we go that I, I love I'm that sure definition I absolutely <laughs> sure you are we all are <laughs> So why strengths are actually important to our happiness? So in addition to that energy, is there any particular way that the strengths also impact our personal happiness and well-being? Well, by using your strengths, if you think about those things that energize you, that naturally you will become very, very good at those things. And the more you do those things and you use those strengths, the more confident and motivated you are. So I don't know about you, but when I'm doing things that really energize me, automatically I'm going to be happier and I'm going to be, if I'm motivated and confident, my happiness will go alongside that. So those things really back up and really would make me happy because I'm using those strengths and feeling really energized and motivated. So I'm in a really great place. Yes, brilliant. So it's very intriguing, isn't it? Because those personal strengths and that X factor is, as you're saying, energizing us and therefore we feel happier. And once we are happier, we are more productive, we are more creative, we are more innovative. So it's a lovely loop of a kind of positive impact on our life. Very positive spiral and very positive uplift. 
Okay, so that's all fantastic. It sounds like an amazing thing to have more of in our life. But let's be honest, we're not necessarily taught or spending much time thinking about our strengths. I think it's something that we maybe gain the insight through experience or we gain that insight from feedback from others. Unfortunately, in traditional performance management, more about people's weaknesses and people's blind spots rather than people's strengths. So how I can discover my strengths? How do I know what I'm good at? So how do you know what energizes you, what those strengths are for you? Well, for me, I use a tool, my experience is, is using a tool called Strengthscope. So that's an absolute tool that helps you increase that self-awareness. So step one is absolutely, how do you use your strengths more? You've got to increase that self-awareness. You've got to understand what those strengths are for you. And some people are really aware already. And for others, that is a little bit of a journey. So Strengthscope is a tool I use. Uh, obviously, that's part of my business and there's a cost associated with that if you go online and you google you will find free strengths finders and actually those tools you can use to go away and to increase your awareness around your strength so there's absolutely tools out there to help you as an individual to find out a little bit more once you've got that knowledge then I suppose it's what you do with it isn't it and we all have lots of things that, that we can learn about, but it's actually applying them that's going to make the difference. So once you've got that increased self-awareness, it's about building time in to reflect and to plan and to be a bit more proactive about how you're using them rather than perhaps being a bit more reactive. And we're all up against it, aren't we? Time pressures, there's so much going on. But to build that bit of time in to think about how we're going to work, not just what we're going to achieve, but how we're going to do it can make a real difference to using those strengths. Mm, yeah, fantastic. So first element, that self-reflection. And I love the fact that you're saying they are specific tools, they are specific pay tools, free tools. So you can kind of have a bit of exploration and see what information you get from these and how do you feel in yourself? Is that really what energizes me? Have a bit of self-reflection. I would definitely also think about, this is a braver one, but thinking about getting feedback from colleagues and getting feedback from friends and family, because that's really fascinating. I think we have lots of strengths that are a little bit hidden that for us so we may not see it as a strength but people around us see it as a strength but the most important aspect Nick which you mentioning is this is all great but if we don't use it ultimately nice thing to know but the real impact of that energy motivation happiness and well-being comes from applying our strengths. So I guess that's the idea of stretching our strengths. So how can we do that more often? Can you give us a few practical examples? Of course. So so I love your point about feedback, by the way. Oh my goodness, really powerful. There's elements of 360 feedback with, within what I do, but also love going out to get friends and family feedback because actually they'll know you so well and they'll be able to give you feedback on your strengths I'm sure so really yeah really useful in terms of how we can do that more practical steps so once you've got that self-awareness and you know a bit more about what your strengths look like try and challenge yourself so think about a project or something that you're working on one of your goals that perhaps has stalled a little bit, that really isn't moving forward as fast as you'd like it to, or that you're starting out on and, and you're planning for. And spend a bit of time reflecting, either on your own or if it's more motivating for you with others, to try and think about how you're going to bring those strengths that you've got that new self-awareness of into that goal. So, is it that this project, this thing you've been tasked with perhaps at work is overwhelming you? There's so much to it. You actually just don't know where to start. Well, I mentioned results focus earlier. If that was one of your strengths, what my advice to that individual would be would be to break down the task. So instead of seeing it as this massive thing, spend some time planning and brainstorming what key elements come into that. And once you've identified those, actually popping those into a list, ticking those off as you go, if results focus is your strength, 
that would be incredibly motivating for you. That would energize you through that process. If results focus isn't your thing, and maybe creativity is, so you love coming up with new ideas and suggestions, blank page and a Sharpie is for you. Well, the brainstorming section of that exercise, the sitting down, the going through, the coming up with ideas, that that would motivate you. So use that. Or collaboration, maybe it's working with someone else. That's the thing that really helps you to be energized and motivated. Well, don't sit on your own and brainstorm it. Get one of the stakeholders involved and do that together. So it's looking at the challenge that you're facing, thinking about how you can really apply those strengths to that challenge, because that's where you're going to, instead of trying to do something and trying to achieve your goal, you're going to do it naturally because you're using your energies to get you there. Oh, that's amazing. I absolutely love that. The, all of those examples. So one project, and as you said, maybe the challenge on being overwhelmed, but such a different approach, depending on what energizes us. Love that. So even asking, I guess, ourselves, what energizes me? What could help me to show up at my best in that project? I think that's already can give us few ideas of how I could be approaching it. Because you're right, I definitely would be energized more by that collaboration as rather than necessary having a long, long list to do that will provide probably overwhelm me more. So a really interesting point there, depending on, yes, what strengths do we bring to the table to work on something? When we met, Nick, for the first time and we had a bit of chat, you actually said to me, you know what, I think one of your strengths is enthusiasm. So I went away and I've listened to your podcast on enthusiasm as one of the strengths. And I must say, I found it absolutely fascinating because, first of all, I wouldn't necessarily spot enthusiasm as a strength. And I think that's because my definition of a strength is a a little bit more biased towards thinking some more practical skills. And for me, enthusiasm and energy is more about personality trait. But I really loved that that was one of the strengths that were featured on your podcast. But the more fascinating aspect was it's almost like easy to stretch if something energizes you, it's Sometimes, okay, I can really dial it up in my practice. But what I really found interesting was when you were talking about dialing it down. That is, there might be situations when our strengths, they won't support us. They actually may hinder us. Can you tell us more about this? Because I'll be honest, my mind was blown away when I, when I heard that on your podcast. Okay, so yeah, let's go into that. So in terms of overdrive, overdrive is where when you've got a strength in something, you'll do something so, so naturally, you won't actually have to think about it or consider it, it'll just happen. So for instance, enthusiasm is also one of my strengths. And I perhaps how I could easily spot it in you. And I feel like that for me, is really powerful. So let's say I'm going into a sales environment, I'm introducing my product to a new customer. My enthusiasm needs to come across. Absolutely, it does. But and that would help me in terms of achieving my goal. If it was to go into overdrive, that might be, for instance, where I just couldn't stop telling you how great what I do is for my customers. And I wouldn't necessarily read your body language, or react to you. So if my strength was going into overdrive and I was so passionate about it, I just couldn't help myself, that enthusiasm strength, particularly if I was talking to someone who didn't have the enthusiasm strength, I would need to dial it down a little bit to be aware of the situation, the goal and the team because the people you're working with is so important when you're using your strengths. You've really got to consider what their strengths might look like and how you can really optimize those together. So I suppose the overdrive piece is all strengths are powerful and absolutely they're what we should be celebrating and using. But having an awareness of what that looks like when it's to an extreme allows you to really think about actually in this situation, is that enthusiasm positive 
Or actually, has it gone so far to the extreme that for those around me, it's actually working as a negative to them? And that's about considering, as I say, your team, the situation, so where in the project or the journey you are, and how you're impacting others with that strength. Yes, thank you. And I think that is fascinating, absolutely fascinating, because again, traditionally, we speak about there is a strength and there is a blind spot. So usually they're quite opposite, but I really like the idea that, of course, our strengths might be going into overdrive. And of course, they might be overshadowing us or other people, depending on the situation. And when I was listening to your podcast, immediately I thought about a few examples that I need to dial up my enthusiasm when I'm running training because I'm really trying to energize all the participants in the room. But I need to dial it down when I'm in specific meetings, when I'm not in a spotlight and I'm not presenting, because if I don't dial it down, I go into being overly enthusiastic and I don't give other colleagues a space to speak up. I will interrupt people. And it's not from being rude. I'm just so excited about something. And I definitely learn to dial that down quite naturally because I'm also quite collaborative. So it's yeah it's absolutely fascinating about that piece that yes we're dialing it up and we're stretching our strengths but we also need to maybe dial them down if we go into overdrive absolutely I really resonate with what you're saying because my passion is I keep having to hold myself back now because I want to interrupt and to get involved because that is absolutely my passion and my enthusiasm but I know that actually what you're saying is adding real value. So I, I want to give you that airtime. That's a real great example of how that enthusiasm strength on occasion definitely needs dialing it down. But that's not to say it's not as equally powerful when you're dialing it down because those around you will still be feeling it or maybe on a different level to you are. Nick, you said specifically you're working with a very specific strength tool. Can you tell us more about that? How many and what different type of strengths your assessment is looking into? Yeah, so the assessment I use is called Strength Scope, and it's got 24 different strengths within the wheel, and they're split into four different sections. So it's interesting when you said about not seeing enthusiasm as a strength, and this wheel does take into account those task-focused strengths, which were things more like critical thinking, like creativity. So those are the thinking strengths. It takes into account execution strengths. So those are the things that you use to get results. So like results focus, I mentioned decisiveness. They fall into that execution strength. We then have more um, internal strengths. So emotional strengths, so such as enthusiasm, we talked about emotional control, they would fall under there. And then we have relational strengths. So those are to do with how you have relationships with others. So collaboration, we've talked about, would fall under there. Relationship building, having that network of people to work with and really getting an energy from building that. Those things fall under there. Empathy, compassion. So the strengths wheel does take a real robust approach at looking at each of those strengths. And I suppose with strength scope, the approach is about thinking about your strengths in terms of a goal. So when we think about ourselves, we are a sailboat sailing towards this goal. And essentially, our strengths are the win in the sails that's going to get us there. The good thing, I think, is a positive psychology approach. Some people are a bit questionable in terms of, is that a bit fluffy? Well, no, it's not, because we do also look at those weaknesses, those shorter spokes on the wheel, the things that don't energize you. And we look at them with real focus because we consider, are they something that falls below the waterline of that boat? And if they are, we need to bridge that gap. We need to put something in the hole because otherwise it's going to sink the boat. You're not going to get to your goal. So we've got to do something about those weaknesses. We also think about the ones that are above the waterline. And actually, we think about those to the level that we don't need to concern ourselves with them. They don't impact us in getting to our goal. This is when you talked earlier about a performance management technique and how we try and like look at those areas of focus and those gaps well actually we don't care about those gaps that fall above the waterline because we're not never going to get strength from everything so it's about using what we've got to get us to our goal so so in terms of strength scopes approach it's incredibly positive in terms of people's responses easy to follow which is what I love about it and the consequence of that is it's applicable. 
So team that up with a bit of coaching. And before you know it, you're really using these strengths. Yeah, thank you so much for expanding because I suddenly thought mm, we should actually maybe expand that aspect a little bit for listeners. Nick, any final practical tips that our listeners can take? I think we covered it earlier, but take some time to find out, go online, Google it, find a free tool, use it, go away and research. What do you think your strengths are? Ask your friends and family, you know, how does that come across? What do you think? When am I really performing at my best? When am I buzzing? Identify whatever method you use to identify what those strengths are. Take the next step and reflect and plan and think about build some time in, how can I use those to overcome my challenges? So what is it that's really stopping me achieving my goal? And which one of those strengths can I use to help me get there? Brilliant, fantastic. So some quite real reflection points there. And because this is a podcast about happiness, my favorite question that I ask to every guest is what makes you happy, Nick? What makes me happy? Lots of things make me happy. I'm very lucky. Spending time with my friends and family absolutely makes me happy. I'm a, quite a social person. I also love, I love achieving things. So I really love getting a result. So whether that be at home with the family or at work. So for me, I'm happy when I'm really achieving. That's something that's important to me. Thank you so much, Nick, and for your time and your insights about that X factors and the strength. Absolutely fascinating. I mean, I've definitely learned a lot. So thank you so much for coming to the podcast. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Nick, so much for sharing her expertise around strengths and utilizing strengths daily, I really dare you to spend some time identifying your strengths. This is such an important and powerful topic when it comes to our happiness. And you can do it in two easy steps. First one is to simply starting to note down specific work activities, achievements that you're particularly proud of. And next to these, write down skills that you use for them to happen. So, for example, you might be particularly proud how the meeting has gone with a tricky client this week or a tricky colleague or a tricky friend. And the interaction might have gone well because of some of your key strengths, such as maybe you're really good at negotiating, maybe you're very good at remaining calm under pressure, or maybe you're really good using neutral language that doesn't increase a conflict and tension when the tricky conversation is happening. Whatever strengths you use in specific achievements, write them down so that you can start seeing a theme of certain skills and strengths that you're using. And the second one, which is a little bit more nerve wracking, but is so important, is to ask other people for feedback. It could be really simple. You could text people, drop people a note, but simply say that, well, I finished listening very excellent podcast about X Factor and happiness, and I have a bit of homework. Would you mind answering one question? What type of skills do I demonstrate when I'm at my best? Or what type of skills do I demonstrate when I'm at my best? Very simple question. Or one specific skill that you see me using that you were particularly impressed by. Very simple questions that can allow you to gain feedback and understand what strengths you have and how other people see you and how are you showing up in the world. Thank you so much for listening. I really do hope that you find this useful. Next week is the final episode of the series. I know. So tune in for some practical advice on how to find spark, motivation, and drive to be happy. 
whilst I'm preparing a new series, because I will be definitely back, please do stay in touch by following me on Instagram at and happiness official. I'm planning a very interesting campaign on the happiness challenge, uh, really challenging you to start incorporating some of the techniques that I have been discussing in the podcast. So stay in touch by visiting andhappiness.co.uk or following me on Instagram at andhappinessofficial. But whatever happens, I dare you to be happy. Bye.